Hello, this is a quick overview of the DES encryption algorithm looking at the computational aspects rather than at anything more political or social or about how it, work, how it works or how it's embedded. This is just about how you get from having a plain text that you want to send uh, some key and then you put it into this black box called DES and then you get out of it some cipher text. So let's look at that in quite a bit more detail. When we start to break open the box labelled DES, you see that inside it there's a couple of other boxes. Um, the first two that I've put on this picture with labels are transposition and inverse transposition. Actually, these aren't really cryptographic. They're ways of converting the plain text into easily manageable chunks and then reversing that. Uh, to send out a cipher text, and they were actually because when it was first invented, the machinery wasn't so good at reading stuff in or something. It's a historical thing, but they're still there. So the transposition and the inverse transposition aren't actually encoding at all. You've got your key, which is 56 bits long. You've got your plain text, which is 64 bits long, and these are combined to give you 64 bits of output cipher text. Actually, the key is 64 bits total because it's got some parity checking bits, but the, the functional bit of the key is 56 bits for the internal of the algorithm. So the plain text goes into the transposition box and the key doesn't actually feed into the algorithm until the actual processing part of it. And the key is combined with the output of the plain text to get to the next stage. We're going to zoom in now to the actual internals. And in the internals, what we've got are 16 boxes. These 16 boxes are called cycles. And the inputs to these are the key and the transpose text. As I mentioned, 58 bits for the key, 64 bits for the transpose text. And there are 16 cycles inside this main encryption routine. Uh, I've drawn them as a kind of snake just so they fit in a box. They're just one after the other and what happens in each of these cycles here is similar but it's not identical so each one has a slightly different aspect of the key and each one has a slightly different way of combining stuff but broadly speaking what happens is the same first before anything happens the plain text key um, the transpose plain text that you're sending in is split into two. So this is the text that you want to encrypt that has been transposed. Um, and that's split into two 32-bit sections. So your 64-bit text becomes two 32-bit chunks. Each cycle only really operates on half of the text, and then the halves are swapped. So the first will look, look at the right half of the the text that you're enciphering and the second cycle will look at the left half of the text you're enciphering and so on. What this gives you is a means of making sure that you can use the same system for encoding and decrypt, decoding, encryption and decryption. Um, you just look at the halves in different order with different subkeys and you end up being able to use the same type of thing for each one. So we've got our 64 bits of plain text split in half which are turned into 32 bits and these go one of these 32 bits goes into the main algorithm. And what we got here starting off we've got an expansion which takes the 32 bits and duplicates half of them which gives you 48 bits. The key is modified too so you get a subset of the key which is 48 bits and these two are combined with, with using XOR. So the 48 bits of the message text are combined with the 48 bits of the key text using XOR. Um, the different bits, that then, then the different parts of the algorithm uh, use different keys. So the different, if each, the, each cycle uses a different modified key. Um, and the combined subkey and text then go into the substitution stage where it's broken up, substituted and recombined. In this stage what's happening is there's basically a big lookup table. So you've got 48 bits of input which come from your key, subkey combined with the expanded text that you're looking for. And these get sliced into 6-bit chunks. 
and each six-bit chunk goes into a substitution box, which is basically a lookup table that replaces the six bits with four bits. So if you do the sums, you realise that after this bit of lookup stuff, we're back to 32 bits. So you've got 32 bits going in, expanded to 48, combined with the modified key, shrunken down using this lookup table in the S boxes, and then output to the permutation routine. The permutation routine takes these 32 bits and shuffles them about a bit. And one of the reasons it does this is to ensure that each of the S boxes outputs, the S box from the substitution routine beforehand, each of their output bits go to a different S box next cycle. So it's all properly shuffled up and jumbled up. So that's broadly speaking uh, DES. So the one thing to really be aware of is it's if we zoom out again, you've got a core which has got 16 cycles and these 16 cycles do broadly the same thing. Each one has a different part of the sub key, each one has different lookup tables and you can look these up on the web, it's quite well known. But broadly speaking that's how DES works. One of the other things that you get with DES is actually TDES which is kind of triple DES and with that you have three keys. So still, instead of having one key which is 56 bytes or 64 if you include the parity bits you've got triple the length of key and what you do is you encode it with key 1 and then you decode it with key 2 and then you encode it with key 3 and that gives you a cipher text which is more um, more encoded uh, more, more more unbreakably encoded um, a stronger cipher and that's D